Hey there, iOS developers. Want to use a Firebase Dynamic Link to deep link into your app? Well, you've come to the right place. Let's get started with Dynamic Links on this episode of Firecasts. Firebase Dynamic Links. They're deep links that work the way you want them to. With one single link, you can take users right into the app if they have it installed, or the appropriate app store if they don't. And better yet, they survive the app store installation process, so your app can still grab the original link context even if your user had to install it first. Sound good? It does to me. So uh, let's start building one. Now, there are three main steps in implementing dynamic links in Firebase on iOS. First, we'll need to perform some additional configuration steps both in the Firebase console and our Xcode project. Second, we'll need to create an actual dynamic link for testing. And then finally, we'll add some code to our app delegate to read in and parse any dynamic links and then pass that information off to the rest of our app to handle. So we're going to tackle the first two steps in this video and then that last one in a follow-up video. So before we get started, let's take a moment to understand how dynamic links gets passed into your iOS app. There are going to be two ways you'll see this happen. First is through universal links. Now you probably know what universal links are, but if you don't, they're essentially a way for you to map your website to your iOS app by placing a little Apple app site association file on your website. Now this file tells iOS that any content found at certain locations on your site are also available in your app. So when iOS encounters these URLs, it will open up your app instead of going to Safari. And then it'll pass that URL into your app so that your app can handle it and show the user the correct information. Now don't freak out if you're like, ah, I've never set up universal links for my website. You don't have to. See what happens is when you use Firebase Dynamic Links, all these links start with a domain that looks a little something like this. Well, Firebase will create its own little mini website at that domain and then it will add its own Apple App Site Association file that points from this domain right to your app. So when iOS runs into a URL at this domain, it opens up your app instead. So you don't need to do the work required to set up your own website for dynamic links. Firebase does most of the work for you based on whatever is in your Firebase project. The other way dynamic links can sometimes make it into your app, yes, even in modern iOS versions, is through custom URL schemes. Basically, you can think of these like normal URLs, except that instead of starting with HTTPS, they start with something that's unique for your app. Your app basically tells iOS that it's going to claim any URL that begins with this custom scheme. And when iOS encounters one of them, it'll pass it along to your app to open. Now, by default, Firebase Dynamic Links use your app's bundle ID as your URL scheme. Now, you can change this if your app is already using a custom URL scheme, but otherwise, I would just stick with the default since it makes your life a whole lot easier. So we're going to need to make sure our app supports both universal links and custom URL schemes. Now, I'm going to start with an app where I've already gone ahead and created a project in the Firebase console and performed all the initial setup steps. Don't know what I'm talking about? Well, you should go watch this video first and then come back. So let's set up our app to receive universal links. This will involve giving Firebase a little more info about our app and deciding what domain we want to use for our dynamic links. So I'm going to jump into the Firebase console here and select my project. Then go into project settings and pick my iOS app. Now, if you didn't set your app store ID earlier, you're going to need to add that here. If you're working on a published app, select its ID from the app store. Otherwise, if you're fooling around with a test app like I am or your app just hasn't been published yet, pick the App Store ID of your favorite app as a temporary solution. I'm going to go with Google Photos here because Google Photos is pretty awesome. Just don't forget to change it back when you have a real App Store ID. Next, we're going to need to set our App ID prefix. If you don't know what your App ID prefix is, 98% eh, of the time it's the same thing as your Team ID, which you can find here in the Membership section of your Apple Developer account. But in some kind of rare and weird exceptions, you might have a different App ID prefix than what's listed here. So to be absolutely sure, you can look at the provisioning profile you're using to develop this app. If you do a quick look in OSX, you can grab the value right here, which, hey, what do you know, is the same as my Team ID. So I'm going to go and enter that value into the Firebase console. Now that this is done, we're going to decide what domain we want to use for our dynamic links. So head on over to the dynamic link panel here and click Get Started. First up, Firebase is going to ask us what subdomain we want to use for our dynamic link. Now, a couple of notes here. First, you can't use this subdomain in other Firebase projects. So I would generally make this something specific to your project, like the name of your app, and not, say, your company name. Also, depending on what you enter here, you might need to add some extra verification text into your website's DNS entry to show that, yes, you really are the owner of that brand. So no, you can't claim google.page.link. Nice try. 
In my case, I happen to be verified right away. So now Firebase is gonna create that little mini website with an Apple App Site Association file pointing to our app. In fact, we can check it out right now. I'm gonna type this URL here into my browser and then add Apple App Site Association afterwards. Now, if everything's gone okay, you should see a little something like this. See, this section here basically says that any URL sent to this domain will go directly to my app with this bundle ID on iOS if it is available. In fact, I recommend making sure you see this site up and running before you move on with the rest of the process. Okay, next up, we're gonna to need to make sure our client can handle these incoming links. So open up your Xcode project, select your target, then over here in the capabilities tab, you're gonna to wanna to turn on associated domains. Now, depending on the account you're using, Xcode might just think for a second and then enable this for you. But if that doesn't work like this, it might mean that you're gonna to need to talk to whoever on your team has access to the Apple developer portal and ask them to turn it on for you. Basically what this means is your Apple developer administrator person is gonna go over to the identifier section of the Apple developer portal here and either create a new ID for your app or select an existing one and edit it and enable associated domains among the services. They might also need to create a separate development provisioning profile for your app that they'll download and send to you to install, which you can usually do just by double clicking on it. Either way, you should then be able to turn on associated domains in your capabilities. And once you've done that, you're gonna to need to enable the specific domain of the dynamic link. So I'm gonna start by typing app links colon, and then I'm gonna go and copy and paste the domain into here. Make sure you don't have the HTTPS bit or the trailing slash. And you should have something that looks a little like this. Okay, so universal links are set up. While we're at it, let's set up support for custom URL schemes. This one's pretty easy. From within Xcode, select your target, then select info. Now down at the bottom where it says URL types, hit the plus sign. For your identifier, you can leave it blank, but I prefer to give it a name like bundle ID. And then where it says URL schemes, add your actual bundle ID dots and all, like this. Remember, this is the custom URL scheme that Dynamic Links uses by default. Great, we're all set up. In fact, you should be able to test this. Now, a couple of things to note about universal links is that they don't work if you cut and paste the URL into Safari, and they also don't work on the simulator. You're gonna to need to click on these URLs from something like the Notes app or iMessage on an actual device. So to do that, I'm gonna test this on a real iPhone, which I'll show in a quick time window. Hi there. So first, I'm gonna install and run the app with its new settings. Then I'm gonna switch over to Notes, and I'll add this URL to a new note. Now I can click on it, and you can see that iOS switches over my app. Hooray! Now, this URL isn't a real dynamic link. It's got no data associated with it, but it's enough to make sure that I've got my universal links working properly. Now, unfortunately, I found that universal links can be kind of finicky and are tough to debug. If universal links aren't configured correctly, your link just opens up in Safari and you don't really get any explanation as to why. So if your app isn't opening up when you click on this link, here are a few things to check. First, make sure you have the right URL in the associated domain setting here and that this capability is turned on in Xcode. Second, double check that you entered the correct app ID prefix here in the Firebase console. Third, you might have accidentally turned off universal links for this domain. You can fix this by long pressing your link until this action sheet comes up then select the option that says open in your app name, and that will once again reactivate universal links for this domain. By the way, be careful about not clicking open in Safari. That basically will disable universal links for the domain on your device and might actually be how you ended up accidentally turning them off in the first place. Fourth, you can always double check that the Apple App Site Association file has been created in the right place. And fifth, apparently there's a bug out there where iOS sometimes just doesn't download the Apple App Site Association file associated with your domain. Now, the current workaround is to delete your app, restart your device, reinstall your app, and then try it again, which I know sounds terrible. So I might suggest following the radar that's linked in the description below just to see if that's still an open issue. It might not be by the time you see this video. But assuming everything's working okay, we are on to step two. Let's create a real dynamic link. Now, there are ways to do this programmatically, and in fact, I'm guessing that a lot of the dynamic links you create will be created that way, either using our client libraries or the REST API, and we will talk about that in a future video. But if you're looking to just manually create a dynamic link, either to embed in like a social campaign or for testing purposes, you're gonna wanna do that from the Firebase console. So I'm gonna go back into my project and make sure I'm in the dynamic link section, then click this new dynamic link button. I can give it a custom URL here, and uh, I think I'm gonna give it the very imaginative path of test one. Then I'll click next, and here I can give it a name like my very first test link. 
Uh, but up here is this deep link URL parameter. Hmm. So this URL parameter is the data that's gonna get passed into your iOS or Android app. Now you might expect this to be like a JSON blob or something, but dynamic links requires this to be your URL. And that's because if you were to open this dynamic link on an unsupported platform like a desktop browser, the link parameter is where we would take you by default. That's why it's gotta be an actual web URL. So if you're a company where the content of your app very closely mirrors the content of your website, it's probably best if this link parameter basically points to the corresponding content of your website. For starters, it'll take people to the right place if they open this link on a desktop browser, but it also means you can probably piggyback on any universal link logic you might have already set up to turn these links into the right spot in your view controller. Uh, your Android compatriots can probably also do the same thing with app links if they've got that set up on their side. Now, on the other hand, if you're an app like, say, a game, where your app's content isn't really mirrored on your website, go ahead and make it any link you want. I might recommend putting them all in the same root directory so that you can easily redirect people from these URLs back to like a marketing page or something if they were to open this link on a desktop. Make sense? Okay, let's head back to our console. So for my deep link URL, I'm gonna add this very inventive value of example.com slash data, hello equals world, and foo equals bar. Man, I'm, I'm clever. Next up, we're gonna specify what should happen if I open up this link on iOS. Now I want this to open up in my app, so I'm gonna pick that option and I'm gonna select from any of the iOS apps available in this project, in my case, only one. Down below, I can choose what to do if my app isn't installed. Now, I like the idea of sending my users to the App Store. That's generally the point of using these dynamic links, so I'm gonna stick with that. Under this are some advanced options where I can do things like open a specific iPad app if I have one available, or add some App Store parameters. But now this bottom checkbox is to be used only if I wanna use a different custom URL scheme than the one that Firebase Dynamic Links uses by default, which as you recall, is my bundle ID. You shouldn't have to mess with this unless your app is already using its own custom URL scheme and you wanna keep using that for your dynamic links. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, please just go ahead and leave this unchecked. Next up, we have some options for what to do if a user opens this link in Android. I don't have an Android app, so I'm gonna go with this option here, which is to open the deep link URL that I specified earlier. Finally, I have some advanced options. Now these social meta tags let me specify a title, message, and image to use in a dynamic link. And these are used in two places. First, they're used by many popular social networks to populate the preview images and text that accompany this link. But then they're also used to help customize the, hey, we're about to go to the App Store page that you're gonna see in the next video. So I strongly recommend customizing these even if you're not planning on sharing this link on a social network. Track a campaign with UTM parameters will let me specify the source, medium, and name of this campaign associated with this deep link. And this is used both in Play Store campaign tracking and in Google Analytics for Firebase. Finally, the skip the app preview page option lets me skip the interstitial page that comes up before we take you to the app store, which you'll see in a moment. Uh, I would take their advice here and leave this unchecked. It's a good page to have. Now I'm gonna click create here, and then you can see I've got my dynamic link ready to go. Nice. Now dynamic links automatically shortens this link for me to the nice URL path that I specified earlier. But if I click on link details here, I can see the full dynamic link that this short link represents. I sometimes like to refer to this full link when I'm curious about how I might build a similar link programmatically. I can also check out this debug option, which gives me this really neat flow chart that describes exactly what's gonna happen in my link depending on the situation. Uh, I recommend checking that out if your links aren't acting the way they're supposed to. But most importantly, I can also try out this link on my device. And just like before, it opens up my app. And just like before, my app doesn't really do anything with this link yet, so I think it's time we fix that in the next video. So to review, we enable dynamic links in the Firebase console by adding our App Store ID, app prefix, and picking our own custom domain. Then we added the associated domains capability and our custom URL schemes to our Xcode project. Then we created our very first dynamic link in the Firebase console, and thanks to the magic of universal links, we used it to open up our app. Coming up next, let's actually do something with that incoming link, as well as make sure the click on a link without having the app installed first process works okay. It's gonna be a thrill a minute video, so be sure to stick around.